I'm Harry Smith and welcome to Eye to Eye. Katie Couric is off. The iPhone finally hits the streets this Friday after months of anticipation. New York Times technology columnist David Pogue is one of the few people who has been able to get his hands on one. He takes Apple's new combination cell phone music player and internet device for a test drive. All the things that Steve Jobs showed and that people got excited about really are true. It's fantastic. It's tiny. It's gorgeous. You know, it's it's uh, got these unbelievable multimedia features, photos, camera. Um, so all of that is true. All the criticisms are also true. There is no keyboard except for on the screen. It can be a little slow at first to tap out text. Um, it's the AT&T network and uh, the internet when you're in a wireless hotspot is very fast, but when you're out in AT&T network land, it's very slow. So all the pros and all the cons turn out to be exactly what people guessed. I'd say the, the biggest breakthrough, and there are a number of breakthroughs, is the internet stuff. The, the email is the real deal with fonts and layouts and attachments that you can open, Word, Excel, graphics, so on. Um, and the web, the web on this thing is unbelievable. It's, it's not the iPhone, it's the iWeb. It, uh, there's no little scroll bars. You just move around the page by dragging your finger. You zoom in and zoom out like it's on a, a piece of sheet rubber. Um, and it's the real web, the real text, the real font, the real layout. There are no games on the iPhone, but there is YouTube. So 10,000 YouTube videos have been reformatted from the usual blurry format into the much more uh, sharp and clear Apple format. So you just tap one like that. All videos play in landscape mode. Um, so I just hit play and I'll start to get that video. So we have Google Maps. Uh, both satellite view and map view. Again, you scroll, you pinch and unpinch to zoom in or out, like this. Um, but what nobody knows yet is that there's also turn-by-turn -turn driving directions. Um, and it's not true GPS because it doesn't know where you are, but it does show you each driving instruction, and then when you get to that intersection, you hit the arrow, and it shows you the next step the next turn you're supposed to make like this. And again, you can do that in satellite view or street atlas view. As a bonus, this nobody knows either, free real-time traffic reporting. If I tap this little car icon, it will color code the roads to show me the traffic conditions before I get there. A lot of people have asked why Apple chose to partner with AT&T, which in the Consumer Reports annual cellular roundup was ranked very low. Uh, among carriers. And one of the reasons is AT&T gave Apple carte blanche to change everything about cell phones. So a lot of the things people hate about their phones are gone on this thing. So for example, you buy the iPhone and then you take it home. You don't sign up for an account at the phone store. You come home, you do it in the leisure of your, your own home on your own computer in iTunes, what plan you want, what features you want. So there's no salesman with bad breath breathing down your neck. Also, Visual voicemail is enormous. That is, when you want to check your messages, you don't dial. You tap one button, and here's a list of them, just like an email program. And you, know, you don't check your email. Your, your email checks you. It's quietly coming into the phone when you're not looking at the keyboard. I had a lot of trouble with it at the beginning. And I've seen young people go, anti-disestablishmentarianism, what? And, and then I had a lot of trouble. So I think it's, it's individual. It depends on who you are and how young you are, how used to it you are. Um, but Apple gave me a strange tip when I told them I was having trouble. They said, just trust it. In fact, one guy said, use the force, but he was kidding. Um, but it is true. If you stop stressing over each letter and seeing if it came out right, uh, there's this intelligent software that looks at, at the keys around what you hit and says, oh, you must have meant this word and proposes it that way. So it's not really quite as bad as you might think. And when they told me that, I started getting much better speed and accuracy. I mean, now I'm like H-E-L-L-O. That's about my speed. I wouldn't say the iPhone is for everybody. Um, again, it's not for the corporate set. Um, it's not, God knows, for people who just want to make phone calls. Um, in fact, one of my pet peeves about it is that answering a call is very simple. You just tap the screen, or if you're wearing the earbuds, there's a little tiny thickening of the earbud right here, and it actually clicks. And all you do is click that to
to answer the call, the music or the video pauses and then resumes when you click again and the call's over. So um, it's not for, so, but, but one of my pet peeves is to make a call, if it's in your pocket and asleep, it can take as many as six steps. You wake it up, you slide your finger to activate the buttons, which normally go to sleep in your pocket, then you hit the home button, then you hit the phone button, then you hit the address book, and then you tap the name. So it can be quite involved to make a call. So it's not for people who want something, you know, very stripped down. And it's really not for people who aren't away from the desk much because the huge benefit is having the entire internet and email and YouTube right here. On the other hand, that leaves a heck of a lot of people who could use one of these.